Do you want to get higher quality images from any iPhone? Then stick around because in this video, we're going to be demonstrating an alternative technique to capture greater dynamic range when shooting high contrast scenes. And that is via exposure blending of raw images. But first you might ask, when do you use exposure blending? Exposure blending is used when the dynamic range of the scene cannot be handled with just one raw image and when HDR methods are not giving satisfactory results. It is also best used if you want more control over the final output. To illustrate the need for exposure blending, let's start off by editing a single raw image which I took with my iPhone. I liked how the handsome cat in the scene augments the dramatic sky taken at sunset. Unfortunately though, the image is not exactly what I saw that day. Portion of the sky is missing detail and color and looking blown out. Let's try to bring back some detail in the sky with a highlight slider. As you can see, the step is unsuccessful. Lowering the highlights merely turns the white into gray and no detail was recovered. Clearly, highlight data has been clipped. Since one raw bracket is not working, I'll try an alternative technique utilizing Affinity's HDR merge with three exposures, an underexposed bracket, a properly exposed bracket, and an overexposed bracket. By the way, all the brackets in this demonstration were captured with our partner app Aura HDR Camera which supports the raw exposure bracketing and has many more powerful features. I'll leave a link in the description. I'll click File, New HDR Merge. I'll select the brackets. As you can see, a nice result. Unfortunately though, while the tone mapping has done a good job, looking at the sky, detail has not been completely recovered. In addition, lowering the highlight slider does not help at all. Also, the oranges in the image now also look a bit more muted and less punchy than the original. So with the HDR merge not giving adequate results, now is a good time to try the alternative exposure blending technique to see if it will produce a better output. For this demonstration, I'll just use two brackets, the underexposed and properly exposed brackets, which I deem adequate for this scene. To start off, I'll add both raw brackets as layers. You can use Ctrl C and Ctrl V to copy and paste to do this. I'll move the properly exposed bracket to the top of the layer stack. There, both brackets are now in the correct positions. I'll add a mask. With the mask selected, I'll add a gradient. I'll move the handles to lengthen the transition and ensure a natural looking blend. By the way, if you want to see how the mask looks like, simply option click on the mask thumbnail. There, a nice looking blend. However, some parts of the water are still blown out. No problem, since I'm using exposure blending, I can further refine the mask. I'll paint black on the blown out areas with a soft brush. Next, I'll increase the exposure of the top layer to make the subject stand out. And I'll add some clarity to the bottom layer to make the sky pop. So here's the original bracket. Here's the result via HDR merge. And here is the result via exposure blending. As you can see, while it took more steps, the exposure blending technique in this case gives the more visually pleasing results, better matching what my eyes saw that day. So I hope you found this video helpful. Do let me know if you have any questions on this technique. And do consider supporting our channel by getting Aura HDR8 camera on the iOS App Store, the best app for computational photography. See you in the next video.